Hello, I'm uh, Dr. James Douglas, uh, a GP with an expertise in industrial and occupational health. Um, I've been collaborating with my colleague, uh, Neil McLean, um, who's from the geotechnical industry, uh, with an expertise in personal protective equipment. We have tested the effectiveness of the surgical type 2R face mask, uh, which is currently being used in hospital and community settings before a diagnosis of COVID-19 has been confirmed. In essence, we have been doing a fit test um, on the surgical mask using a smoke chamber as a model to approximate a healthcare setting. We've been using a breathing tube beneath the mask in order to capture the smoke and compare the different masks and different adaptions to the mask. We used a five minute exposure in intense smoke to model an eight hour shift in a healthcare setting. We've tested the effectiveness of the surgical type 11R face mask, uh, which is currently used in hospital and community settings before a diagnosis of COVID-19 has been confirmed. Recent research from MIT in America has shown that coughs and sneezes produce an inhalable cloud of variable particle size. We have concluded that the surgical type 11R mask will allow the patient's exhaled air to enter the respiratory system of the healthcare worker when in close proximity. We tried simple modifications to the surgical mask, including uh, three layers and use of tape, uh, but the smoke, although reduced, was still clearly visible. An FFP2 industrial mask was better than a surgical mask, but still demonstrated um, smoke contamination on the breathing tube. We found that the FFP3 industrial mask gave complete protection. It is very clear that intensive care unit should remain the top priority for personal protective equipment. Reusable FFP3 masks could also be issued to individuals working in high risk areas if cleaned and maintained, they could last for many months. The supply problem of FFP3 masks and other personal protective equipment can potentially be unlocked by asking industry, which is currently in lockdown, to release from their stores personal protective equipment, which can be checked. This collaboration between the NHS and local industry has worked very successfully in our area. Our overall conclusions of this study are that clinical areas currently using surgical face masks need to be reconsidered for FFP3 industrial masks.